everybody. Welcome back to our Joe's to Pros Academy SQL Server Unlock series. I'm Bali Kehel. With me is Rick. Uh, today uh, we're going to be talking about query execution plans. Rick, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit more about uh, query execution plans? Why would somebody need it? Well, you know what? I think of SQL Server as your kids. You know, mm -hmm. you want them to do well. You want them to do as well as they possibly can with what mm -hmm. they've been given. And it's funny, before the show we talked a little, I asked you, do you have any kids? And you right. said, yes, I do. And uh, one of the things, I guess your daughter, she's five? Yeah. Yeah, um, you said five, yeah. she now helps you set the table. Mm -hmm. Okay. Imagine if you said, honey, can you, can you please set the table for us? And she goes into the garage. Mm -hmm. so why she go in the garage? She, says, she thinks the, the utensils are in there. Mm -hmm. And then she said, well, I'm at a guest house. Isn't that where they keep it? No. And then so she goes downstairs. And then she goes in the bathroom. And she's looking in every room. And eventually, if she looks in every drawer in every room, she will find the spoons. But do you want to tell her where they're at so she doesn't have to waste all that time? Sure. Uh, that'll be much better. Yeah. It'll save a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. Now, sometimes when you've lost your keys, or you've, you, you have no choice. You've got to look everywhere for one little item. Sometimes SQL has no choice. But when you can save the time, and see if a cool server can save the time, why not? So what is it doing, what is it planning on doing? Just to find one key or just to find one item. So that's what query execution plans are about. How did it go about solving that problem? So what happens is if you know where something is, it's not lost, and you know exactly what drawer it's in, that's known as a seek. You go straight to it and get it. But if you've lost something and you really need it, you got, you got to put every blanket off the bed, and you got to go open every drawer, you are scanning the house. And here's what makes matters worse. Let's say you decided to scan your house because you lost your keys. And after five minutes, you're lucky. Oh, they were under the socks in the corner. Are you going to keep looking for your keys? Are you going to look in every part of the house? I already have it. You so. already have it. Yeah. SQL Server's at a disadvantage from humans. SQL Server doesn't know that that's not the only pair of keys. For example, if I said, SQL Server, find, you, let's say you knew at your company, the only person who makes over a million dollars is the CEO. And you forgot his name. You forgot his number. You forgot something. So you ran a query that says, show me all the employees who make over a million dollars. And SQL Server, in the first record, finds the CEO a million. Instead of returning you that record, it's going to scan the whole table and then produce that one record. Mm -hmm. So if we can tell SQL Server how unique a, uh, a table is, and where things are, it doesn't have to search the whole table just to produce the one or few records you want. Mm -hmm. So is it doing a scan or a seek? Seek means it knew right where to get it. Scan means I don't care if you had one record, a hundred records, or a million records, I had to look at everything before I returned the result, which is a lot slower. So let's try to get seeks instead of scans. All right, and uh, looks like you know, what, you, what you mentioned, seeks are a better way once a SQL Server knows that where exactly my data or record or in this case keys are lying yes the, you go directly to that yes and otherwise you are literally searching for it uh, throughout you know all the different rows in a particular table yes right? all right so i'm going to show you an example yeah. of two different queries that okay. produce the exact same record all right contractor id 1 now look at my screen here contractor id 1 if you look up his social security number, or in this case, it could be an EIN number if it's a business, but we have some sort of tax identifying number. Contractor 1 has a tax identifying number of 222-22-2222. All right? And, and that's, that's your social security yeah. number, but please don't use that for bad purposes. So anyway. <laughs> don't file your taxes with it. <laughs> yes. So anyway, as I run this one, you're going to notice we got one record. Johnny Dirt, right? Now, if I run this second query, it appears to do the exact same thing, one record. But in the example I used with your daughter, whether she went straight to the kitchen counter and got the spoons or whether she searched the whole house, the end result is the same, one set of spoons, mm -hmm. right? So these queries, although they produce the same thing, they did not have to work the same amount. One worked a lot harder than the other. So I'm going to highlight this one, and there's this button right here that if I hover over it, it says include actual execution plan. What did you do to find this one record? All right. So I'm going to click that button, and you'll notice down here when I run it a third time, I'm going to have a third tab telling me not just what it did, but how it did it. So as I run this, there's this third tab, and it says I did a seek. And we can even hover over it, and it'll, it'll tell us the cost, which is like three thousandths of a second. Really fast, you knew right where it was. This second one, which produces the exact same record, Johnny Dirt, has an execution 
of a scan. It searched every single record in the table before pulling this one out because it didn't know where it was. And the cost, well, the cost on this small table is not a whole lot higher than the other table. But anyway, when you get to larger tables, the payback gets a lot bigger for seeks versus scans. There's times when you can optimize a table to, to go and get the seeks rather than the scans. Mm -hmm. Well, this is really interesting. Uh, I think so like when, so when choosing seek versus scans, you don't have an option doing that. It's how you make your query, how you set up your tables, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, any, any trick uh, which is there uh, while, while even uh, seeing your execution plan? Uh, I know like we, we see seek versus scans, like uh, mm -hmm. can, it, can you do something primitive like where you want it to go, it's just writing the query better or how does that work? Yeah, now that gets into knowing what questions are asked most. You know, just like um, what things do you put up really high on your kitchen? like some sort of oil you might use once a year at the holidays. That's way up high and you gotta get a ladder to get it. But what's right here, you know, your salt and the butter and everything that you get every day. So what you, what you can do is what are the most frequently used traffic patterns against your SQL Server and optimize those ones. That was some really good stuff, Rick. Uh, I think so now everybody understands what a difference between seek and a scan is. <laughs> In our upcoming episodes, we're gonna touch a little bit more into performance tuning. We really appreciate your feedback. We've been getting tons of it so far. Keep it coming. Uh, thanks for watching the series, and uh, we'll see you until next time.